there's one more thing about exposure in your camera, okay? It's called bracketing. And your camera can do it automatically, you just have to set it. So what is bracketing? It's where you take three sets of pictures, and some cameras can support more sets of pictures, but typically, uh, entry-level cameras, a lot of what we're using, only does three exposures, three sets of pictures, okay? And what it's doing is you're taking a dark picture, a normal picture, and a bright picture. And when it does that, it's trying to tone down the highlights in the dark picture so we can see that detail. Then we have our normal, your mid-tones, everything, everywhere in between. And then we have a really bright picture to kind of help expose those shadows in those dark areas. And this is bracketing. So when we combine them all together, we get a shot like this. And you can see that we're starting to see more of what our eye saw when we were there in that moment. HDR is what this process is called, a high dynamic range. And that's what our eyes, our eyes are incredible when we're out on doing landscape shots and we can see the sunrise, but everywhere in the canyon or whatever it might be, because our eyes can differentiate between the highlights and the shadows and compensate for that. But the camera can't. The camera has a tremendous limitation when it comes to that. And so to compensate technologically, we do HDR or bracketing photos to get these different exposures of the same scene. And then we use software to bring it all together and we can combine it. So on your camera, let's take a look. On my, on my camera, my settings here, this is what it looks like to set bracketing. Now once this bracketing is set, more often than not, I need to set the timer on my camera so that when it goes off, it will fire it in rapid succession the three different photos it needs to take. Otherwise, I every time I click the shutter, it's going to take one of those. And the thing with HDR photography is that the, the photos need to align exactly. So having a tripod is nice if the shutter's a little slow. You can get away with it if you have a really fast shutter and the, you're not, the camera's not gonna notice you moving or breathing or anything like that. So I set the, the timer on the camera after I set the bracketing settings, the HDR settings on the camera, and then it takes those three shots that I need. And the settings on the camera, just to clarify, is I do negative two stops to the dark side, okay? And then I do positive two stops to the bright side. I just realized that was kind of a Star Wars reference to the dark side, but Anyways, so we're, the camera's gonna set that and then you're going to set your camera settings, your exposure settings, so that the, the middle shot, the normal shot, lines up on that zero tick mark inside of the viewfinder. Okay, that's when you're gonna get your perfectly exposed bracketed photo shot, right? Okay, now once we have our pictures, this is where it gets a little dicey in the photo community when it comes to HDR pictures and editing them. So to edit them or to, com to combine them, let's start there, to combine our HDR pictures, I use Photoshop. It's the photo merged, photo merged to HDR, okay? That's where it's gonna take all of them, it's gonna blend them together, it's gonna figure all that out for me, and then we're good. Now, after that point, there was a process called tone mapping. Tone mapping is where, if you've seen HDR pictures, is you get those incredibly grainy highlights and the oversaturated look, and it's just a very, very surreal HDR look. And uh, some, a lot of people, not some, a lot of people overdo it. And so in the photo community, people are very, very agitated by HDR photography because it's not real. That's not what that landscape looked like. That's not what that person looked like. Uh, it's, it's too grungy for a lot of people. So to avoid criticism, especially if this is your first time going after HDR, is I tone map using Camera Raw. And we'll walk through uh, later in this class the photo process, the editing process for HDR photos. But I use Camera Raw to tone map, which means I can then 
expose and darken areas and and have all of that detail inside camera raw as if it was just a normal raw photo with impeccable detail in every part of the picture and then I just norm edit it like normal. I boost the sets a little, give it some levels and curves, and, and you know, and then we just go about it that way. I don't use HDR software because it is it is too intense. And I while I love HDR photography, I love all that I can capture in it, but I do like not the surreal look, but I do like the pictures that look more like what I saw with my own eye. And some people will complain and say that that's not how it was. I'm like, well, yes, it is how it was. It's what I saw, okay? Just because the camera can't capture it doesn't mean that's not what it was, okay? So there's a big debate, and depending on where you're posting your pictures, you're probably going to hear about it. You might have already heard about it. So I tone map in Camera Raw, process your photos like normal, uh, Keep it kind of toned down, but feel free to pull the detail out of those shadows or bring the detail down in the highlights, uh, whatever it is that you need to do to create the more realistic HDR picture that you took. So it does take some of this. Uh, you can do a lot of this in Lightroom, but like I said, we'll walk through a photo editing process and how to do some of this later on in the class. I hope this has helped. If you run into any questions in setting up your HDR, your camera settings, uh, refer to your camera manual. Okay, every camera is different. Nikons are especially more difficult to find this setting. Canons are a little easier, but keywords or buzzwords that you're looking for in your manual is bracketing, auto exposure bracketing, or AEB, or HDR, um, things like that, you'll find them in your, the menu on your camera. Some cameras have uh, quick uh, buttons to toggle those settings so that you can activate those really quick. And then just as a final reminder, the final tip is use the timer on your camera to rapid succession fire off those pictures so that you don't have to. So with that, I'm signing out. I hope understanding your exposure and how to work the camera a little better has helped you become a better photographer already. Now let's dive into the next section. We'll see you there.